So uh, this video is about uh, drilling a main shaft to accept a fore shaft. And I've had some requests on how I do this, and I'm going to show you a freehand technique how I just uh, hold the, the drill uh, by hand to do this. Uh, I just did this just now, and uh, these are birch dowels. Okay, same diameter. And um, let me see. I think it's three eighths. Okay, three eighths dowels, which is a pretty common uh, width for the thickest part of the arrow uh, for both um, reeds and shoots. Uh, so you know, I thought it'd be a good, a good um, uh, material to demonstrate with. Okay, so what I do here is um, I try to find a, a very straight, uh, a very straight grain piece of of dowel, or uh, if you use a piece of split wood, straighten it uh, as much as you can beforehand. Um, you know, when you split wood, sometimes it doesn't split straight, and uh, I think you know the drill. You just shave it down first and then straighten it later. And uh, this one is kind of short. I don't, I'm not using this as an arrow. I'm using this as a demonstration. So uh, I had cut previously a bunch of pieces of birch for four shafts, and that's what this is. But I'm going to drill this like it's a main shaft. Okay. And natural material usually tapers from the fat end down to the skinny end. Uh, when making Native American reproductions, uh, in the vast majority of cases, you'll find that the fat end is drilled for the foreshaft. Okay. So, I'm going to use a power drill for this. Now, you can use stone drills, of course. And uh, I'll do a video or two on stone drills. But for now, I'll just use this power drill to demonstrate how I do this. And it, it's almost the same technique with a stone drill, uh, except, you know, instead of holding the uh, drill in your hand, you've got the drill anchored to something, and then you, you twist this, you know, you twist this onto the drill. But I'll, I'll show you that later on. Okay. So the most important thing in starting this is to get it dead center right when you start. Okay, it's very important to get this as centered as you can in the very beginning. Now this is a dowel, it doesn't have any natural pith. So it's a little bit harder to start. But I spin it around, try to get the, uh, try to get it centered as much as I can, because it's very important to get it centered in the very beginning. Everything else goes much easier if you take your time to center this first. Now with natural shoots, you have a pith, and makes it much easier. But I, I still like to drill out the pith. This is a 1 8 inch drill bit. I like to drill out the pith if there is some in there uh, to 1 8 of an inch. Just to get it started. And then you use a larger bit uh, to do the final, final work. Okay, so that looks pretty centered to me. And... Uh, when you're doing this freehand, you've got to, you know, use your eyeball to align this. But I'll show you what I do to keep it straight. You know, I, I spin the uh, shaft material like this from time to time. Or I let the drill spin it. 
you know, I'll loosen my grip on it and let it spin it. But I'll show you that as I continue. And again, this initial part is very, very important. You got to keep it centered. And if it starts to wander, if it, if it starts to wander as you're drilling, you know, you put pressure, you know, use your hand to, to guide the drill, put pressure that way, you know, this way or that way or up or down, whichever you feel will center it. And you get it to about a quarter of an inch depth at first. And that's the most critical part, that first quarter of an inch. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go faster here. Now I don't have anything wrapped on this right now. I should probably do that just to prevent splitting. You know, the wrapping is more critical with the larger drill bit. You know, when you go, when you go up to the larger size to start drilling, it uh, you should have it wrapped. But I'm going to wrap it right now just in case and I just use regular thread you can see the other one I wrapped okay hopefully you can see that looks like there's some glare off that light I'm just holding it like this, putting a little bit of pressure on it or a little bit of tension. Spacing it between a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch every time I do a wrap or a turn around. And uh, I'll wrap more thread toward the uh, the end here and I don't cover the entire surface you know I don't you can see you can still see some of the wood through the thread this is good enough Okay, so I just smooth it down. Okay, and that dries. Pretty quick, quick enough to keep it stuck on there. All right, that's just tight bond. Okay, so I'll continue with the uh, drilling and I'll drill all the way down. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to drill all the way down to the base of that.
again. You see how it's wobbling there? That means it's not going in. It's not going in perfectly straight, so. Try to make a correction on it by adjusting the, the way I'm drilling. So it's still a little bit wobbly. But I think it's good enough. Uh, it might be just because the uh, stick is a little bit warped. Let's try that. Yeah, that's good enough there. It, it does wobble a little bit. But I think that's good enough. It might be slightly off center, but I think that's good enough. Okay. And I don't have to drill this one all the way down, just until I can see the threads disappear. Now this this bit here, let's see. This one is 7.30 seconds. Again, the beginning is the most important. I want to make sure it's tracking right down the middle. And the drill will kind of pull itself into the into that cavity. It'll pull itself, so you got to be kind of careful and hold it firmly, so it doesn't, you know, get get away from you and crack. And I back it in and out uh, often, so that it's, it remains clear, so it you know it doesn't grab really drastically all of a sudden. And you can feel it bottom out too, so. I think it bottomed out right there. Yeah, okay. So it looks pretty good. I'd like to have about a sixteenth of an inch. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if that shows up, but it's about a sixteenth of an inch on the walls. I'm not sure where I got this one, but it's uh, it's actually from metal, I believe, but it, it works. 
It kind of works on wood. Mine's a little bit dull right now, but if I just go slow enough, it, it won't grab it and tear it. Just checking to make sure. Just make sure I'm centered. And I like to ream it out that way because a, uh, a stone drill will produce that you know that reamed out look when you're using a stone drill and you bottom out the uh, the base well you'll see but it'll it'll produce that little reamed out uh, look to it okay so it should match theoretically to this prepared uh, four shaft and I need to drill further in because it's bottoming out before it hits the shoulder so let me drill it further Now with these, it's um, it can be a friction fit if you're very careful when you're carving the foreshaft. I mean, it can be a friction fit, but usually when you've got a shoulder like this, it's a it's glued in. Uh, friction fits a little bit different. All right, so uh, you can see that you know as you you can you turn this to adjust it. I'm going to show you that it's not perfectly straight in some of this in a, uh, when it's um, when it's not aligned properly. You see that it's it's going that way. The tip is going that way because it. It's not carved perfectly. This this uh, I guess you call it a tenon is not carved exactly correct. So you've got to kind of spin it in there to get it to where it aligns with the uh, the main shaft. Okay, that's pretty good. So yeah, you turn it in there to get it to uh, align, because there's always a certain way that it'll, it'll align better, you know, as you're twisting it. Okay, same with natural material, natural cane or whatever. There's always a certain way that you can get it to line up. Okay, and it doesn't need to be perfect, you know, the foreshaft and the main shaft don't need to align perfectly. I mean, need to be drilled or carved perfectly. You can twist this around and it will align itself. Okay, so that's it. I've got uh, the first one I made here and the uh, the second one. And they both fit really, really well. To this uh, prepared four shaft. And there is a bit of a friction fit, but uh, friction fit is usually a, a totally different configuration where the, uh, the, the fore shaft or the point is not shouldered, and this is just rammed in until it stops. Uh, this is split by accident, but just to give you an idea, it's just kind of uh, jammed in there until it stops by force and this is wrapped this is tapered first the cane or the reed or the, the main shaft is tapered and then wrapped so when 
when you jam it in there, it doesn't split like this. What happened with this one is I, I dropped it on the point and it split the cane. But that's fine. I can still I can still wrap the cane and it'll be fine. See there's a crack in it right there. Anyway, this is this is how I make the um, friction fit, okay, with no shoulder. And and I guess this is the glued version. It can also be friction if you if you carve it carefully enough. But it's it's much harder to make these than it is the uh, friction fit. Okay, but a lot of these were made in the archaeological record uh, for uh, cane, especially for phragmite or phragmites reed. And it, it takes a long time to get this to where it doesn't wobble around inside the uh, inside the main shaft to get this carved just right. So if you have a uh, standard drill diameter with stone and you drill out all your main shafts, you can make a bunch of these that'll fit all your main shafts. And I think that was, you know, you can make a batch of three or four, three to five or whatever. I think that's the way it was done, uh, and, and, you know, until the drill, the stone drill broke and then you had to make another different batch to match the drill. Okay. Anyway, I hope that was clear enough. Um, I may just make another video uh, detailing this better, but I will also make another video or a series of videos on stone tools, or how to make this with stone tools. Anyway, I just carved these. I just carved this um, four shaft with this uh, whittling knife and sanded the uh, sanded this tenon here with the uh, sandpaper. Once I got once I got it shaved down a little bit, I just finished it with the sandpaper to make sure it was smooth with no tear outs. Okay, that's it.